someone is praying for you. Tears is a language that God understands. If you recall in St. John chapter 11, verse 36, the very shortest verse in the Bible, because it needed no sentence, no big paragraph, it simply said, Jesus wept. And so God, Jesus, is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And I want to comfort you by saying that God knows what you're going through. And he's here to give you hope, to give you peace, to give you comfort. And I'm just here to remind you of that. Spanish Town Church, we care. That's our motto. And on behalf of the entire church family, on behalf of the senior pastor and myself, I want to extend our warmest condolences to the family and want to let you know that we care for you and will always be here for you. Without further ado, I'm going to go straight into the word at this time. So bow your heads with me as I pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for being the good God that you are. We come to you this afternoon to celebrate the life of Marva Williams. God, we pray that her soul is wrapped up in you. But even more than that, Lord, for those who are here who have not yet accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, that everyone will make their calling and election sure. Because, Lord, the dead is dead. And the living know that they will die. And while we are here, Heavenly Father, we pray that we'll remember our Creator while we can. Because one day, death will knock on our doors. So help us to be ready. So when you come, Heavenly Father, all of us here will be with you in glory. Amen. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, it says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Man, Job says, that is born of a woman and by man here he means mankind. Human beings who are born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. From the moment we were born into this sinful world, we have an appointment with death. Because the Bible tells us very clearly uh, the wages of sin is death. Uh, through one man, sin entered the world and death through sin, therefore all died, for all have sinned. Uh, in other words, all of us, we have a destiny, a date with death. But I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that although death is so 
fatal and our life is so futile uh, for the Christian death is not final uh, death is not the final destination for the Christian I think I'd hear more amens than that uh, because we have this hope that burns within our hearts hope in the coming of the Lord and so there is hope for those who live and those who die in Jesus come on and say amen, amen. there is hope uh, in Christ there is hope in the resurrection and whether or not you are good or bad whether you're young or old rich or poor this hope is available today Jesus says, he says out of his own mouth, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believeth in me, in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Paul reminds us uh, in, in 1 Thessalonians, he says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus and by sleep here he means death but because we are dealing with the God of life the God who spoke and it was done he, he, he just refers to it as sleep because as I said death is not the final destination and many of us we live hard lives and and, and just in your daily life uh, if you should just go and go and go you would get tired and eventually you need some sleep and I want to let you know that God will put many have uh, many of his good people to sleep just to get a little rest as a song as a songwriter says I want to go to heaven and rest and so Paul is reminding us that if if we sleep in Christ we will be resurrected he says for, by, for, for, by, for, for this we say by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep what does he mean he says here for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and this is a sweet part and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and thus we shall always be with the Lord I want to let you know that if you're a Christian you, and, and Miss Williams is a Christian you won't see Jesus before her because the Bible says she will be resurrected and we shall all be caught up together and so while you mourn, I want to let you know that there is hope. And thus the Bible says, Paul says, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. As a matter of fact, I want to let you know that Jesus is always with his people. He says, I will never leave you. Uh, nor forsake you I want you know you to know that even though you are going through your dark times even though you are going through your crucibles God is still there in the beginning the Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and darkness was over the face of the deep even in your darkness the Spirit of God is there and so there is hope for those who have fallen asleep in Jesus and there is hope for you if you abide in Jesus because grace is still available grace didn't just die when Jesus died grace became more available because of the death of Jesus uh, salvation is free the Bible says for God 
you know the, the, the verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, uh, but have everlasting life. And, and perish here doesn't mean death. Uh, because all of us, or most of us here, because I believe that God will come in, in this generation, but most of us here perhaps will die. But if you're a Christian, you will not perish. It says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, what? Might be saved. And I want you to pay attention to the word might. Because this is conditional. Uh, because uh, it's like a gift. Uh, you can only get my gift if you accept it. I have a nice car for you parked in my driveway and the key is right there on the bonnet. In order for you to get that car, you have to go for it. And so the gift of God is available to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done. Uh, grace is available. Salvation is available. Salvation is free. The Bible says, uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should uh, not perish. Uh, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But here's a verse that many people don't read. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only uh, begotten son of God. I want to let somebody know today that Jesus saves. And there is no other name under heaven whereby men may be saved. Uh, you might believe in new age. You might believe in Selassie. And in fact, I believe in Selassie. I believe that Selassie was a great man, but Selassie can't save you. Uh, you might even believe in a Buddh Buddhism or whatever ism, but I believe Buddha was a wise man. But I want to let you know that Buddha can't save you. You might even believe in, in some various other religious leaders or whoever you may believe in. But I'm here to tell you today that there is only one person that can save and his name is Jesus. As a matter of fact, that's what his name means. The Bible says, the angel says in Matthew 1, 21, For thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus Christ has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He wants to save you from sickness. He wants to save you from suffering. He wants to save you from brokenness and from poverty. Christ wants to save you from death and hell. And somebody here needs to understand that he wants to set you free. I don't know what it is. Whatever you are struggling with. I don't know what's holding you back. I don't know what's, what's causing you earth. But I want you, to let you, I want you to let you know that Christ wants to set you free. And I like the song that says, Who the Son sets free is free indeed he said i've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly this is good news and this abundant life is available this abundant life is attainable you don't have to pay for it because it's free jesus paid it all 
As a matter of fact, you don't have to die for it because Jesus already died for your sins. All he wants you to do is live for him. Nothing else. The door of mercy is still open. So you say, Pastor, I thought you were just giving us a message of hope. This is a message of hope. You're, you're crying for your loved one because you, you miss her but, and you want to see her again. And the hope is in Jesus. Uh, that some sweet day, you and I will go away. And we're going to leave this world no more to roam. And we're going to walk the streets of glory by and by. And we're going to sing redemption story by and by. And we're going to uh, meet and shake hands with the elders. And I'm sure we will shake Miss Marva Williams' hands again. This is the hope that is in Jesus. Heaven is waiting for you the door of mercy is waiting for you the savior is waiting to enter your heart why why are some of us still refusing to let him come in why that is a question i want to encourage you to go to him before it's too late the bible says as i as i close today if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Now is the day of salvation. Not when the new year chips in and you want to start back church. Not at the end of the year. Not when it's your birthday next year. Not when you reach 55 not when you achieved all the glories of this world now because the truth is the next hour is not promised to any of us and you might say i'm young uh, but i'm sure uh, this past week you have read of some news of some young person dying who is younger than you who hasn't done half the sins that you have done and so uh, none of us are immune to death and and and, and long life and uh, success and uh, and the big house on beverly hills or the big uh, bmw or whatever it is is not promise but jesus made a promise he says let not your heart be troubled if you believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am there you may be also many people waste their lives and many people are going to hell because they they are chasing the things of the world they are chasing a mansion in cherry gardens when god already have a mansion with their name on it and they lose their soul because of the love of money and the things of this world but what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul it doesn't matter how rich you are in this world you will not get true satisfaction. Uh, you will not get true peace. You will not get true rest. True rest, true peace, true accomplishment is found in Jesus. And so he's saying, now is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not promised. Today, if you hear my voice, he says, harden not your heart. And so I want to encourage you, give your life to Jesus today. Because tomorrow may just be, it may just be too late for you.
God bless you. Powerful words, um, very riveting. As our pastor declared that we all are going to take this road um, sometime in the future, and we have to prepare. Bless God.